Let's talk about the angle addition postulate. It states that if point D lies in the interior of angle ABC, then the measure of angle ABD plus the measure of angle DBC equals the measure of angle ABC. Clear as mud, right? Let's break that down. Specifically, let's look at this equation. It says that the measure of angle ABD, ABD is this angle right here, plus the measure of angle DBC, DBC, that's this angle right here, is equal to the measure of angle ABC. ABC, that's this whole angle. So in other words, what this postulate is telling us is that you can figure out this entire angle measure, ABC, by adding up each of the little angles inside of it that make up that angle. Also a quick note about notation. You'll notice that some of these angles have an M in front of them and some don't. The reason for that is if you are referring to an angle's measurement in degrees, then you're supposed to put a lowercase m in front of the angle symbol, and you would read that as the measure of angle ABD, or the measure of angle DBC, or the measure of angle ABC. But if you are just talking about the shape of an angle in general, like how the beginning of this postulate stated that point D was inside of this shape, angle ABC, then you just say ABC with no m. That's not a super huge deal, so if you're not feeling super confident about when to use an M or when not to use an M, don't fret too much. I never take off points if a student does or doesn't put an M where one belongs. I just want to make that as clear as possible for you so that you know what to look for or what you're reading as we move forward. I'd also like to take a moment to discuss how we label an angle diagram, because sometimes they can look a little confusing. In order to label an angle with its measurement, you put that measurement in degrees at the vertex of the angle. So here I see a 37 with a little degree, and it's inside of the angle ABD next to its vertex. So that means that the measure of angle ABD is 37 degrees. Likewise, the measure of angle DBC is 45 degrees, because I see this 45 inside of that angle near the vertex. But I also see this 82 degrees inside of angle DBC. So does that mean that angle DBC measures both 45 degrees and 82 degrees simultaneously? No, of course not. That's not possible. Instead, notice that the 82 isn't actually all that close to the vertex of B. 82 is actually attached to this arc. And this arc tells you how far to go left or right to figure out how big that angle actually is. The arc attaches to rays BA and BC. That means that the 82 degree angle is actually referring to all of angle ABC. This also matches up with what we just learned about the angle addition postulate, that if I add up 37 and 45, that gives me an answer of 82. 37 plus 45 is 82. And that's because in order to get to this full angle measure of 82 degrees for angle ABC, I would have to add up the little angles inside of it. 37 plus 45 gives me 82 degrees. But before we get too ahead of ourselves on the angle addition postulate part of this lesson, I want you to pause the video real quick and see if you can identify which angles have each of these measurements. So examine this diagram, look at the angle measures labeled on the diagram, and identify the name of the angle that has that angle measure. Go ahead and do so now. Let's see how you did. Which angle has a measure of 48 degrees? That would be angle WXZ, or remember all angles have two names. You could have also called it angle ZXW, and you're still referring to this 48 degree angle. I can tell that this is the one with a 48 degree angle because the 48 degrees is inside of this angle close to the vertex. So which angle has a degree measure of 31? Well, that would be angle ZXY, or you could have called it angle YXZ because 31 degrees is inside of that angle close to the vertex. Whereas this 79 degree angle, although it's inside of this angle, it's not by the vertex, it's by this arc. So that arc goes all the way from ray xw to ray xy. That means that the 79 degree angle is marking angle wxy or yxw as being 79 degrees. 
This skill right here is essential for like the entire semester. We're going to be looking at lots of diagrams that have angle measurements on them. It's important that we understand how they're labeled so that we can read each of these diagrams. So let's do some more practice with analyzing these angle diagrams and using the angle addition postulate. First up, I want you to tell me what is the measure of angle PQR? P Q R. That's this whole angle. Well, the angle addition postulate tells me that to get to the measure of an entire angle, you can add up the two or more angles inside of that angle to get to the total. The angle addition postulate for this diagram would actually look like this. Now, you don't have to write this step out like on paper every time, but it is what your brain should generally be thinking of when you're confronted with a problem like this. That angle PQS which is this one, plus the measure of angle RQS, which is this one, equals the measure of the whole angle, angle PQR. So I like to say little part plus little part equals the whole thing. If I have my angle addition postulate equation written like this, then it makes it pretty easy to plug in my numbers and figure out my answer. PQS, that's 55 degrees, and RQS is 21 degrees. So I'll plug in those numbers and leave PQR as PQR because I still don't know it. In order to figure it out, I need to add these two numbers together. So my final answer would be that the measure of angle PQR is 76 degrees. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure out the measure of angle JKL. According to the angle addition postulate, I can write that the measure of angle JKM plus the measure of angle MKL would equal the measure of angle JKL. So a simpler way to say that would be that 62 plus 74 equals the measure of angle JKL, and therefore the measure of angle JKL would be 136 degrees. I hope you got that question right, because we're about to try one that's a little bit different. Let's see how we do. This time I want us to calculate the measure of angle DEG. Now a lot of students, when I give them this kind of a problem, will say, okay, I need to figure out DEG. They go to the diagram, they figure out where DEG is, and they're like, oh, look, there's a 79 inside of angle DEG. It must be 79 degrees. Done. Unfortunately, it's not quite that simple, right? Because this 79 is not near the vertex of angle DEG. It's attached to this arc that goes all the way from ray ED to ray EF. That means that 79 degrees is actually labeling the measure of the whole angle, DEF. Let me set up the angle addition postulate equation and show you what I mean. I can say that angle DEG plus the measure of angle GEF equals the measure of angle DEF. So let's plug in what we know. What's the measure of angle DEG? I don't know. So I'm going to have to leave it as just the measure of angle DEG. What's the measure of angle GEF? It's 26 degrees. And the measure of angle DEF, because it's got this arc here, must be 79 degrees. So to figure out the measure of angle DEG, I don't want to add these two numbers together. I want to subtract them. To get the measure of angle DEG alone, I would subtract 26 from 79 to get my answer of 53 degrees. Next up, we're calculating the measure of angle RSU. This one's very similar to our previous problem, so go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure it out. All right, let's see how you did. According to the angle addition postulate, I can write that the measure of angle RSU plus the measure of angle UST equals the measure of angle RST. So little part plus little part equals the whole thing. What's the measure of angle RSU? I don't know. There's nothing there. What's the measure of angle UST? Well, this is, again, where some students get confused because it looks like UST has two different measurements. Is it 74 degrees or is it 148 degrees? It can't be both. And the answer is that UST would have to be 74. 74 is close to the vertex inside of angle UST, whereas 148 degrees is labeled next to this arc that indicates that it's the entire angle measure RST. So I would set up my equation like this, the measure of angle RSU plus 74 equals 148. So to solve, I would need to subtract 74 from both sides, and we actually find out that the answer is 74, the same as the measure of angle UST. In a couple videos, we're going to talk about how that means that this angle, RST, was bisected by ray SU. 
but for now if you can at least figure out that the measure of angle RSU is 74 degrees, then you're right on track. We can also use algebraic expressions to calculate the measures of angles using the angle addition postulate. Always be sure to read the directions thoroughly. You might be tempted to say that angle ABC in this diagram is a right angle, because it looks kind of like a right angle. But if you read the directions, it's actually not right. It's one degrees bigger than right. It's a 91 degree angle. So always make sure that you're actually using facts, not assumptions, when you're looking at a diagram like this. So if I were to use the angle addition postulate to write an equation, it would look like this. The measure of angle ABD plus the measure of angle DBC equals the measure of angle ABC. Then I can plug in what I know from the diagram and from the instructions to make an equation that looks like this. 15x minus 4 plus 4x equals 91 degrees. And now we're going to solve using just basic algebra. 15x and 4x, those are like terms, so I can combine them to get a total of 19x's. Then I would need to add 4 to both sides, and then divide by 19. So I figure out that x equals 5. But that's not your final answer. Remember what I just said about reading the directions carefully? The directions told us to find the measure of angle ABD and the measure of angle DBC. We haven't done that yet. To do that, we need to take what we just learned, which is that x is 5, and plug it in for x in each of these variable expressions to figure out those angle measures. So like, if I plug in 5 for x here, 4 times 5, that's 20. And if I plug in 5 here for 15x minus 4, I get an answer of 71. It's always a good idea with this kind of problem to do a quick double check as well when you get to your answer, and make sure it makes sense. I know that if I add these two angles together, I'm supposed to get to 91. Well, based on my final answers, does that make sense? Yeah, because 71 plus 20 is 91, so I must have done it correctly. Alright, let's try another example. I see some things are labeled on the diagram, and again, some things are given to us in the instructions. I like to sometimes go ahead and write that information on my diagram when it's given in the instructions so that I have a complete picture to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and put this 37 degrees on the measure of angle TUW. Okay, so the angle addition postulate would tell me that TUW plus WUV equals TUV. And then I can plug in each of the numbers or variable expressions to complete my equation. And then I'll solve. So I have some like terms on the left, 37 and minus 3, that would become 34. Then I will subtract 6x from both sides, and add 2, and divide by 2 to get an answer of 18. But just like the previous example, that's not your final answer, right? I didn't ask you for what is x, I asked you what is the measure of angle TUV and the measure of angle WUV. So let's plug in 18. I would get answers of 105 and 142. Now that at first glance might seem like it doesn't make sense because they don't add up to 37, but remember what our diagram was actually showing us this time, the TUV answer that we got is the entire angle measure. So to double check this answer, I would want to add 37 and the 105 and make sure that that, that those two angles add up to 142. And yeah, they do. 37 and 105 is 142. So I must have done it correctly. So that wraps up our introduction to the angle addition postulate. In our next video, we'll be extending it to adding more than two angles per diagram. See you then.